The next day, I walk up to my usual vending machine at lunch only to find that it's out of my favorite drink. Secreted so far away from most of the classrooms, between a storeroom and a library, it's like no one knew about it. I'd expected a vending machine so close to the library to be booming with customers, but then again, the library is empty most of the time, and anyone who goes there is only looking, only doing it to look for stuff to pad a paper with. No one stays there longer than they absolutely have to. For the past month, it's been working in my favor, but the trade-off of the vending machine no one knows about is that it's never restocked. Settling for a can of orange soda, I decide on drinking it here instead of waiting until I get to the cafeteria when the library door opens next to me. Ah. Uh, I've been looking for you. Yuko seems to be acting a lot more assertive than usual today, although it isn't enough to keep her from going back to mumbling immediately afterward. R return your books, please. I mean, they're... The library's books. The books you checked out are really overdue. Some of them are on waiting lists. Oops, I forgot. I keep checking out new ones. Forget to return the old ones. That happens to me all the time at the university library. It's so embarrassing. Do they send someone to try and get you to bring them back? No, the university library is bigger. They don't notice if I happen to borrow something longer than normal. It's convenient because the policy on keeping the books too long is really strict. Stricter than here. I like how despite what she said, Yuko has no problem with borrowing books for long she's than she is supposed to anyway. It makes her stop being so on top of her own lateness a little hypocrite. It makes her being so on top of my own lateness a little hypocritical. It takes a thief, I guess. Catching under the meaning of her words around the same time I do, Yuko clams up and starts backpedaling furiously. Oh, uh, that's different from the situation. It's totally different. Yuko stares at her, at her nails for a second, if she, as if she really wants to bite them, but is too self-conscious to do so. For instance, how long has it been? You checked out some of these books months ago, Sal. Sorry, it's just other people want to read them, too. If you're a slow reader, that's okay, though. No, it's just it's a total screw-up on my part. To be honest, I haven't even read some of them. I shouldn't keep taking out books when I have a backlog. That's not good. Yeah, it really isn't. Now I'm starting to copy her habit of trailing off quietly. Her awkwardness is very contagious for some reason. That said, I'm surprised. Yuko seems almost normal today, although every now and then her waitressy nervous tics keep popping back up. Come to think of it, she didn't act this way when I first met her. She was a little clumsy and erotic, but it wasn't anywhere near this severe until Shizune, Misha, and I ran into her in the Shanghai. It could be that Yuko has a complex about having kids from the school seeing her waitressing. I guess it was a little odd for her to pick the closest cafe to the school to work in, then. In that case, maybe the place having so few cu customers could be considered a lucky break. Well, I get it. I'll return them right after school. As soon as possible, please. Um, wait, can I ask you for one more thing? Sure, what is it? I, I have to go for a while, but I just can't leave the library empty. Sorry, but... Can I wa ask you to watch it while I'm gone? Just for a little bit. I'll be right back as soon as possible. You're in the student council, so I'm sure you did. It'd be okay. All right, I'll do it. Don't worry about. Thank you. Yuko quickly slides forward as if she's so grateful she's about to give me a hug, but she stops two centimeters into it, which ultimately just makes the gesture look extremely confusing. I'm also surprised that she can control her momentum so well, since she seems kind of clumsy. Before I can say as much as you're welcome, she's already dashing off with the urgency of someone late to an appointment. That could be the case, but I wouldn't feel safe assuming so. It's Yuko, and she seems like the kind of person to treat everything that way. Now that I'm in the library, I feel a bit silly. I don't really know what I'm supposed to do. So I sit down and as I normally wouldn't read? It probably would do, but I wouldn't meet Yuko's high standards. Maybe I should sit at the librarian's desk and give anyone who comes in a stern an analytical glare. I use Shizune's as a starting point and practice it, up, practice it a couple of times in the mirrored surface of a pen. I think it looks pretty good. Frustratingly, no one comes in, so I gave up on the idea and quickly and decided to just go look for looking for Hanako instead. It's deserted. I think I see someone, but the second I blink, whoever it is is gone. As soon as I return to Yuko's desk and crack open an interesting looking book, a familiar person swings in front of me like a falling pendulum. Yo, librarian, I've been looking for you like for you for like ten minutes. What? It's you. Man, you must really get around. The student council makes you get around. Those bitches, how could they? Slave drivers. You must be exaggerating because it took me 30 seconds just to do a slow walk around the whole place. The thought is overridden by my surprise to see him. Where'd you come from? What are you doing here? What? Can't a guy go to the library now? I can't even go to the library without some young buck like you giving me the third degree over it. 
I see some girl coming in here all the time, but no one ever asks what she's doing here. Is it because she reads and I don't? You must be talking about Hanako. Although I suppose they both avoid people, I want to tell him that reading is what you usually do in a library. So if he's not reading, whatever he's doing is bound to make him look way more suspicious than her. In the end, though, I'm too surprised by him actually appearing out of thin air. That, that doesn't tell me what you're doing here. I'm here because of you. His response makes me feel confused. Maybe I fell asleep and this is all some weird dream, and this Kenshi isn't real, but really my subconscious. Is he going to st start giving me deep but vaguely worded advice now? Because of you, I got chased out of my dorm by feminists. Now I wander this library like a soldier without a country or a ghost. I should haunt you for ruining things for me. It's a shame. It would have been an interesting dream, but it seems like this is a real deal. Yeah, you had to start working with women that brought them to my door. You remember that? You said she were there. After that day, I knew they were onto me. I should have trusted my instincts, but I was young and stupid. That wasn't even a week ago. Then, my dad called and said one of my letters hadn't been delivered. The post office couldn't have lost it, so it must have been intercepted. Information warfare. That's when I knew my secret hideout was compromised. Now I'm on the run, like a fugitive. It's code red. Dorm rooms aren't secret. They put your name and number on a board right in the doorway. I know, I saw that. They're diabolical. Why not put a big Wild West Wanted poster if they're gonna be like that? Wanted, dead or alive? Probably alive, so they can clone me and turn me into a grasshopper. Jumping without warning into the empty chair opposite me, Kenji takes out a cigarette and starts spinning it between his fingers. I've never seen him smoking before, so it must be for effect. I can't even live where I want to anymore. This is where it all begins. The technical brilliance. I mean, once they're in your room, it's over like ter termites. If the feminist is planned for dominance, dominance starts here. Where the fuck can we go? The only question is how they could they take a page of the termite playbook when women are naturally repelled by wood. You can never go home again. Is that how the saying goes? Man, I don't know about never. I was just there. I don't know anywhere else I can go. I don't know anywhere else I can... Mother... I didn't even click. Fuck it. We'll do it live. For someone ousted from his dorm room and living on the run, he sure has no qualms about going back there several times a day for long periods of time. But by now, he slowly turned away from me as talking to a revolving di display of murder mysteries. There's really no point in interrupting him, I guess. I finish off my soda and throw the can into the basket near the door. It hits the rim, but goes in anyway. I silently pump my fist. Kenji quickly gets up and starts head to head to the door. I wasn't really paying attention. I hope I didn't fist pump at an inappropriate moment. Where are you going? You kept su sucking down that juice. So it wasn't even juice, it was soda. It's gone now. What do you think means sucking it down? I had two sips. Yeah, right, you had like 50 million sips. That's not even possible. Maybe for you. I go beyond the impossible all the time. Okay, whatever now. I'm thirsty too. I'll go get my own juice. I'll be right back. He does come almost right back, so quickly that I suspect he knows about my secret vending machine. I got you one too. Hope you like grape juice. We're even for the pizza now. Thanks. I want to tell him that I li ne lent him nearly ten times the cost of a can of grape juice, but... That might make him seem, me seem petty. Unopposed, Kenji sits down and starts furiously drinking juice like a madman with a vendetta against grapes. You know, it's a lucky break for me that I managed to run into you here, man. I kinda need you to do me a favor. Although it's cynical, I wonder if him getting me juice was so he could ask for this favor. If so, it's very tr transparent and poorly timed. I doubt Kenji would think about something so deeply, though. Just asking for things straight out is more his style. I need you to recommend me some books. But I thought you didn't read. How did you know? You told me. You said you think people discriminate against you because you don't read. Well, they do. And I do read. I read audiobooks because that's the way of the future. I have to read a book a month for literary studies, though, and I found out that the school doesn't really ac accept such classics as advanced cryptography. If I don't read a bunch of books, they're going to fail me. I can't fail literacy studies. That would make me illiterate. That would mean my mom was right. My, ma my mom can't be right. I'll just have to study literacy as much as possible. What about doing some extra credit? No thanks. I'm bad enough I'm gonna have to tear around these stupid things now. He picks up a dictionary, flips through it, and places on a murder mystery rack behind him. I can't believe this is actually the medium that our ancestors look, used to look at porn. I spit my drink all over the book I'm still holding, damaging it beyond any hope of repair. I quickly check the back and see that it's suggested re retail price is 7,900 yen. I think I might have a heart attack. Wow, destroyed. Shouldn't have done that, though. They take vandalism super serious here. You're gonna get caned. 
He chortles, amused, before taking an extremely loud sip from his can of juice. It's not vandalism. I didn't do it on purpose. You made me do it with your words. What do you mean, cane? I don't want to be caned. Wait, chill out. I didn't mean that I'm going to actually cane you. I just might be pig for it and really, really yell at you. It's like they were going to bite my ass off. Still not that big a deal. I don't care if it's figurative. I don't want to get caned or get my ass bitten off or any kind of punishment, you dumbass. What am I going to do? I'm the only person in here that she knows of anyway. I can't even throw the book in the trash. It'll be found. Then she'll know. Damn, dude. Stop being so weird. How is it weird enough to be want to be fined? Man, stop flipping out, man. I'm not flipping out. I'm trying to save money. So cheap. I'm about to strangle him when I hear Misha's wahaha coming up the hallway. Apparently Kenji hears it too and uses the opportunity to quickly ba vanish behind the autobiography section, like the wind. Hi, he chan Misha shouts exuberantly, dragging an embarrassed Yuko behind her. he chan were you talking to yourself? On one ha hand, saying yes could make me look kind of crazy. On the other hand, if I blow Kenji's cover, he might go off and make me look crazy by association. Yes. Ah, that's okay. Don't be embarrassed, he chan I do it too sometimes when I'm alone. La la la. Oh, nothing happened while I was gone. Absolutely nothing. It smells like grapes. I'm wearing grape-scented cologne. I lie brazenly and obviously. From her reaction, I'm going to assume that she knows I'm lying or have an abysmal sense for colognes. Since the can of grape juice I drank is still right there, it's likely to be the former. Form fortunately, she doesn't ask any follow-up questions. What are you two doing together? We had lunch together. Strictly business. A business lunch. I try to picture Misha in a suit having a business lunch with anyone. Somehow, I just can't see it. What kind of business? You don't know? Ah, it's nothing, nothing. It's normal for one part of the student council to know not know, not know what the other's doing. Hey, don't nothing, nothing, something like that. That isn't normal at all. In fact, it's bad. We're only three people. Yuko laughs nerv nervously. She must be terrified. Michi says that you want to put posters in the library for the elections. Um, even though they're kind of really far away, I guess it's okay. I didn't know that I could even decide those kinds of things. You can! Isn't that great? Ha ha! Aren't you happy? Yay! Yay! Misha grabs Yuko's hands and forces her to clap joyously for herself. Yuko doesn't look very happy about learning that she has more responsibility and power than she previously thought. Keychan, since you're here, you can help me put them up. Pulling out a giant stack of posters from her back, she cuts them in half like a deck of cards and passes them passes me the slightly smushed half. She chan a really good idea. We can put some flyers inside books, too. Then even if they try to ignore us, they won't be able to. They could even be spring-loaded. Misha tries to her best to convey the same tone Shizune used. It sounds close to the real thing, and it's also a little menacing. She was probably kidding. I liked it. No, no, please, not that. A super ultra aggressive marketing blitz. We're gonna start going door to door too. That's a terrible idea. Misha pouts on her best Shizune impression, fingertips tapping together rapidly in annoyance. Hey Chan, you think every idea is terrible? Yeah, but that idea is too terrible, too terrible to ignore. I can't have that. Waha! Hey Chan, that sounds like a challenge. Mutiny, mutiny. Mutiny is bad. Don't fight. Waha! It was just a joke. Okay. Don't fight. Ah, ha, ha. The way Yuko sounds when she's trying to be firm makes me think of a kindergarten teacher. I suppose that, make, that makes her very persuasive in her own way. Putting up the posters is surprisingly hard, simply because the library is already plastered with bulletin boards and flyers lying every couple meters, some of them in places so unlikely that I never noticed them there before. Deciding which of them to peel off in favor of her own adds a lot of time to an otherwise simple job. By the time the bell rings to signal the end of lunch, Misha and I still have a sizable amount of posters left. As we leave, I, I decided to stick one right by the door. It must be one that Misha did. It, it must be one that Misha did. It has a little drawing Shizune on the bottom. A couple of days later, Shizune heads off to go eat lunch by herself and doesn't come back. She must really be swamped with student council work, although I know that she probably made most of that work for herself. 
When I get back to the student council room, I find the door unlocked. Before opening, I hold back for a second to see if I'll hear Misha's laughing through it. Nothing. I'd almost take that as a sign that no one's in, but Shizune wouldn't leave the door unlocked in that case. She's at her desk, sleeping in her chair with her arms folded over her chest. What a stiff pose. If it wasn't for her eyes being closed, there would be no way to tell that she was asleep. In fact, I can't even be sure that she's asleep now. Normally, I tap at desk to wake anyone else up, but it wouldn't work with her. I immediately start thinking of tricks I could play on her if she's sleeping. It's disappointing that my train of thought goes in those kind of directions. Hello. Good afternoon. She sends one greeting with each hand. It's really confusing. Hey, what were you doing? Secretly slacking off? Shizune smiles but lowers her head to conceal it and tries her best to look annoyed instead. Don't just stand there. It makes me nervous that I'm sitting down and you're not. I take a seat in the nearest chair while Shizune pauses to adjust her glasses on the bridge of her nose like she's fine tuning an instrument. Why am I talking so quickly? Why are you so far away? Does that make you nervous too? Pursing her lips, Shizune doesn't look too amused my, at my taunting her. I had some free time, so I thought I would drop by and see if you were still busy. Do you want to help me? Yeah. Too bad. I'm grateful, but it's not necessary. I just finished the last of it, and now everything that needed to be done is done. So formal. Misha was just as business like yesterday. Are you both getting serious for official student council business? I'm always serious, like the student council candidate should be. That was fast. From zero to innocently criticizing people who aren't even colleagues yet, before I've even had a chance to stretch my legs. At least the precedents. They need initiative, and maybe they can motivate everyone else, or at least strong-arm them along. But even though there's a bunch of them, they're still... They're also wishy-washy. There's no one running for vice president. So they all want the big prize, but none of them have the right drive for it. And the treasurer is always so flaky, I've decided to use my power to just eliminate the position. Wait a sec, please. Can you even do that? I don't think it works that way. It is how it is. With that, Shizune stares grimly into the distance, rubbing the frame of her glasses. That doesn't answer the question, future dictator. I'm disappointed. They want me out of here faster because they want the job, or at least disagree with me having the job. If I can't mobilize a bunch of student council wannabes for either reason, all my work will have been for nothing. If they're going to be so slow about it, I'll just hold on to my office as long as possible. Shizune punctuates the sentence with a snap of her fingers, creating a sound as sharp as a, gu sharp as a gunshot. I wonder if she knows how loud she can do that. It's definitely a tension grabber, so I can, I can only see it as invaluable to a mute. She might have practiced it because of that. All of it, huh? That's too harsh. I always thought this was a real test. Leaving a lasting impression is important. It's why I don't build sandcastles. They crumble when you leave. Maybe, but if I see an especially neat one, I still think it's impressive. I'll say it's impressive. I kind of admire you, so to me, it wasn't for nothing. She tugs at her glasses as if, she, as if she wants to take them off, smiling wryly. Sorry. I was careless and something selfish slipped out. I've always wanted to stand at the top. It didn't matter what it was, as long as I was the best at it, and understood it completely, and made it my own. Like when you hear a song and dream of being a musician, or see a plane and wish you could be a pilot. You ever had a dream like that? Yeah. First time I played soccer, I wonder if I'd maybe be good enough to wow people. That was just a fantasy, though. As soon as I saw the gap between me and people real, with real talent, I put those dreams behind me. Well, with my heart the way it is, I can't play soccer anymore anyway. Do you still have dreams like that? No, they're unrealistic. I realized it very quickly. There's always someone better. A nostalgic, ex a nostalgic expression crosses her face. She looks oddly mature right now, as if the days of competing vigorously against others for supremacy are long behind her. Of course, I know that nothing could be further from the truth. Just last week, she wanted to see which, which one of us could blow the biggest bubble with a piece of gum. It could be that she was even worse when she was younger. A terrifying thought. I like that. There was always someone better. When someone greater than me would appear, I'd get so excited, I'd want to challenge them. Even though in the end, they would usually turn out to be better, and I would be left in awe. There are some people who want a different level completely. After a while, I got jealous. I wanted something like that for myself. Is that what student council is? The thing just for you? No, no. Even though it feels like that sometimes, that wasn't why I decided to do it. That is another story entirely. But, I like being student council president. Even if the work is hard and I'm always biting off more than I can chew, that's what keeps it exciting. People at the top shouldn't be comfortable, able to be comfortable all the time anyway. You sound like a farmer. Although they wouldn't suit her, she said it would look cute in overalls and a straw hat. 
So if that wasn't the reason, why'd you run for the job? I didn't, but afterwards I decided to stick with it anyway. I wanted to be the student council president because the old student council was stupid. And I want to stir, stir people up so they will be able to say, that was interesting, today was interesting, that kind of thing. Memorable, memorable experiences. I'm happy because I think we succeeded. You and Misha and me. I have a selfish desire too, though. At first it was something I thought would only be a nice bonus, but I've gotten greedy. That is why it would make me happy if the elections go smoothly. It would be the only way that I can see that my wish was granted. What is it, then? It's a secret. Sensing that I might not be able to let such a weak dodge slide by so easily, Shizune quickly waves down any attempt at a follow-up, embarrassment coloring her face. It's something she wants to keep to herself only because it's too silly to do otherwise. I start to feel a pang of hunger and check my watch. It's earlier than it looks. Too early for dinner. Do you have any kind of food in your desk? For a second, it looks like a question confuses her, but she recovers quickly. Desks are for supplies. Food is supplies. You should have eaten lunch. I didn't think it would be a problem if I didn't. If I was working, I wouldn't have to think about it. I'd be too busy to be hungry. She puts her hand up to her mouth in a poor attempt to conceal a laugh and tries to hide it by further pretending to use it to push her glasses further up the bridge of her nose. I guess you're not, since you already ate. I'm not good enough to sign the appropriate word, so I settle for pointing at the stack of Chinese food containers leaving precariously out of the top of her trash can. Those are from yesterday. Then we're both hungry. Let's get something to eat. Not from the cafeteria. There wasn't anything good at lunch, so I really doubt there'd be anything good left over. Water something? Ordering out two days in a row is unnatural. Only in case of emergencies. That is my personal policy. This is why she should think of putting some snacks in her desk. It would be an easier way of dealing with these kind of emergencies. I want to tell her about signing out how hungry I am like five times and maybe too tired to be a dumb, too tired to be a smart ass. The temptation is really great, though. Hi, hi, hi. Misha's distinctive up and down voice sounds muffled through the door. She bursts in a second later. Hey, Jen, you're here too. Two? How did you know there was already someone in here? If it opens, someone is inside. Wah! Am I interrupting? Shizune shakes her head. Great, that's really great, but I was sure I would be. Is this a break? I thought so too, but it turns out everything student council related is over for now. Is that why you're here? Why, well, yeah, that's right, Hee-Chan. Sorry to disappoint you. We were just dis discussing whether or not to order out for dinner. That sounds fun. Shizuna isn't very, being very fun about it, though. She says you, can, you can't order food two, two days in a row. Are you hungry, too? Because if you are, we can outvote her. <laughs> that sounds fun, Hee-Chan, and I am a little hungry. I thought you would say it sounds like mutiny. Shizune pinches the frame of her glasses, clearly thinking that it does not seem like mutiny, but being outvoted by a clean 2-to-1 two, two margin, there's nothing she can do. Misha already has her phone out. It's awfully garish. Chi Jin, you promised we would have a student council thing just for us, right? Right? This can be it. Shizune only shakes her head. The last party she was able to attend as Yamaku student council president is too special for her to put that label on her spur of the moment early dinner. Even though I'm sure the real thing will just be like this. I mean like any other with the three of us. Wonder if I should end the part off. Yeah, I'll go another minute or two. You know what? No. I'm at fifty nine minutes for this recording. So I might split this up. Might upload it as a full hour hour part. I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. Well, as you can see from that conversation we had with Shizune, she really has a bit a large personality that she really hides. And if you don't go her, down her path, you won't know really any of this about her. Which is to be expected if you don't go down a certain path. You don't, won't really know them, but there's still more story to come. I mean, each path is only four acts, and we're in the third one. But there's still a lot more story and some surprise to be had. So, I think I'll end the part off here. And next time on Let's Play Kato Shoujo, we will continue with this act. Possibly start in the next one. 
and maybe we'll find more backstory. We'll find out then. So until then, take care, I'll see you guys then, and keep on.